2011, you advised to keep a watchful eye on inflationary pressures and to pay real attention to expenses. Uh, that was from an article published uh, 2000, May 2011. Um, would you say that that still holds for 2012, or has that changed? Well, we'd like to think that the inflation challenge uh, continues to be kept under control either by the uh, Fed in the U.S. with respect to the U.S. or by prudent uh, uh, buyers and suppliers uh, throughout the U.S. And so even if that were true, I would tell people that because there's still an unknown as to how much better the revenue will be, assuming it does trickle up as we expect it will, that the importance of controlling expenses is still paramount. So if we take our eye off the ball and let expenses inch up as revenues start to creep up, we may have a challenge in our hands that our margins may be no better than they were before when we deserve to have improving margins if we can get the revenue increases that we've been looking for. 39 years you have been in the industry. What do you see as some of the biggest innovations or changes in the industry, positive or negative? Well, I always look back and say, what were we like before something? And I'm very proud of the fact that we've had substantial change in this industry to the point where maybe we've forgotten what it was like before. So one of the things I think was one of the biggest breakthroughs for the industry was the introduction of electronic funds transfer, EFT, to allow members to pay on a monthly dues basis, an automatic withdrawal basis, so clubs could have much more of a predictable story. And if there's anything that outside financial firms highlight is this recurring revenue theme of having an understanding of, for the first time of the business because often as much as 80% or more of the business comes in on a predictable basis every month. What that meant previously was that people sold prepaid annual or multi-year memberships and it wasn't clear that if we sold 100 in January of one year, then we would sell 100 or more the next year. So people like bankers, especially local bankers, never understood our business and therefore discriminated against us, made us sign personal guarantees or pledge uh, outside assets in order to get loans that maybe the business always qualified for. So this has been a big, big breakthrough. The second one is this industry has finally attracted a set of very committed but now very knowledgeable uh, set of uh, staff who have degrees and certifications in areas like exercise science, exercise physiology, uh, anatomy, uh, physiology, um, kinesiology, etc. What this also means is that clubs now will have more predict more credibility going forward and now can attract people um, such as seniors or first-time exercisers whose only concern is if I come into a club, is there a downside? Could I hurt myself? Could I be worse off because I'm feeling pretty antsy and uncomfortable coming in? This industry now has more and more talented, qualified people who have degrees and certifications that would allow them to really be able to help these kinds of people um, who have doubts or have discomfort about coming into the clubs and be comfortable now and in many cases be successful where it wasn't so clear before. Some additional changes that have occurred over the year which impressed me uh, include the increase and in diversification of club programming, uh, especially in the group exercise area and now even in the small group training area where variety, uniqueness, um, a, multi, uh, a, a multitude of offerings are now provided so members have really wide choices as to what they might want to do even in a pure fitness only club. That's magnified and multiplied by a huge number if it, we're talking about a multi-sport club where they may have a basketball gymnasium, uh, aquatics area, uh, tennis or racquetball courts, squash courts or other kinds of offerings. Another thing that has been really significant 
is that we've uh, now, as time has gone on, have really developed some segments of the industry. So clubs have figured out who they are and who they are not, and are not trying to be all things to all people. So separate from the obvious 24 hour, seven day a week, all access clubs, or separate from the uh, high volume HV, low, low price LP, HV LP clubs, that obviously go after a substantial number of members at a very low price. We have clubs that have really tried to differentiate themselves and actually use that word to try and tell a story so that they are known in their local communities for being much more uh, understandable for what they stand for and what they are not offering. And that's made a big difference. And segmentation was going to happen. It was a question of when and what, uh, uh, and when the industry would get mature enough that people would realize that they might need to start thinking about specific targeted audiences. One last thing, often a measure of an industry is when people can prove that they've created real value. So we've seen people actually exit from the industry, what might be small family-owned businesses or other people with small groups of clubs, and have successful exits. This validates that this is an industry where businesses can be created and then viewed by others as being valuable and then sold so that uh, we now have measurements of what people did to create value and that leads to obviously future transactions and even a more mature industry over time.